Ukrainian forces have made considerable gains as the war hits the 200-day mark. Troops have been able to liberate multiple towns and villages across the northeast part of the country. The Russians have had to retreat from Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. Ukrainian officials say they now have reclaimed an area that's about the size of Rhode Island. CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Pata has the latest details for us. With breathtaking speed, Ukrainian forces have swept through Kharkiv, pushing just 30 miles from the Russian border. <laughs> Greeted everywhere like conquering heroes, staking a claim in yellow and blue on land occupied for nearly seven months. <laughs> the Russians suddenly started shouting wildly and running away, said Dmitry Rushchenko, charging off in their tanks. It's a humiliating defeat for Vladimir Putin's men and a decisive blow to Moscow's ability to resupply their forces. Now they can no longer use liberated Izium as a strategic hub. They left all their explosives and ammunition here, said this Ukrainian soldier. As the Russian front line collapsed, the extent of a war declared on civilians is becoming clear. A hospital blown up, schools destroyed and fresh new crime scenes as police begin the awful, familiar task of digging up the bodies of those killed by Russian soldiers. The Kremlin has ordered its troops to regroup on the eastern front line, but not before they fired off a gruesome parting gift, striking a thermal power plant that plunged much of Kharkiv into darkness overnight and cut off water supplies in many areas. Shelling from across the Russian border still managed to hit near here today. But not even that can dim a daring new feeling rising for Ukrainians. Hope that the tide is finally turning in their favor. John? Deborah Pata in Kharkiv. Thank you. For more on this, I want to bring in former U.S. Ambassador to NATO, Ivo Dalder. He is the president of the Chicago Council on Global Affairs, as well as retired Marine Corps General James Jones. He's the former Supreme Allied Commander for NATO. General Jones, let me start with you. What's your assessment of why things are shifting in favor of Ukraine right now? Well, I think it, uh, it goes back quite a ways to... Uh... Uh, almost a decade ago when uh, there was some hope that Russia would possibly join uh, the Euro-Atlantic arc uh, before Vladimir Putin uh, replaced uh, President Medvedev. Um, in NATO at that time, we had good relations with the, uh, the Russians. We had the NATO-Russia Council, the NATO-Ukraine Council. Um, and on, at the military level, we exchanged uh, training uh, philosophies. We uh, introduced uh, them to the role of the NCO in the armies. Um, the Ukrainians took advantage of all of that. The Russians did not. And, they, and I think from, from day one, the catastrophe that has uh, fallen Russian uh, military capabilities has astonished the world. But um, they just simply did not uh, modernize uh, and train the way that modern armies do. And as a result, they're paying the price. Ambassador Dalder, do you think that the success of this push, which is not just holding the line, but actually making big gains, does that change the diplomatic uh, situation, breed perhaps more donations, more help from Europe? Well, it certainly will help uh, in sustaining the incredible Western support that has already been coming uh, to Ukraine in the last 200 days in terms of the military assistance, in terms of the training, in terms of intelligence, and in terms of financial and budgetary support to an economy that is uh, really under incredible pressure. We don't talk enough about the fact that uh, the Ukrainian economy, of course, is suffering a devastating blow because it is at war. But it, when you see uh, 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 Ukrainian forces retaking something like 3,000 square kilometers uh, of territory just in the past nine days, and by the latest estimate, uh, 60,000 square kilometers liberated since uh, April, uh, if you go back to uh, all the way to the liberation of Kyiv uh, and the surrounding areas, you do see many people in Europe, as I would expect here in the United States, to say, listen, we need to support the Ukrainians. We need to, to do what we can to make sure uh, that the battles that are being won now will ultimately end into victory in this war. And victory means pushing Russian forces outside of uh, Ukraine. 
It's not Ukraine, Russian territory, it's Ukrainian territory, and, and having uh, Russia back on the defensive is, at this point, uh, the right thing uh, to look forward to. General Jones, the way this gets talked about sometimes um, kind of lapses into, uh, like, this is a, a, a sporting match and not the deadly thing that war is. So in that, with that in mind, can you tell us what it's like for an army to have the upper hand as the Ukrainians have in this offensive? And then also, what happens in, uh, to uh, forces that are being routed the way uh, Russians have been this past weekend? Well, nothing good happens for the latter, that's for sure, because that uh, impacts morale. It impacts uh, the will to fight. Um, it goes back to the homeland in terms of how families view the, uh, you know, the, how the war is going, what information they get, which uh, I'm sure the Russians try to mitigate as much as possible. <clears throat> for, the, for the momentum uh, that is gained, the, the forces are, uh, receive a shot of adrenaline like, uh, like nothing else. It's, uh, it's, it's very, very motivating. But at the end of the day, um, you know, Russia is, is not not a force to be trifled with, and you run the risk of uh, greater, greater escalation uh, if you're not if you're not careful. So, I think what the Ukrainians have done is astonishing. Uh, they are close to uh, inter, uh, to um, interposing themselves in the in the Russian supply lines. Uh, the fact that uh, Russians are running away from the fight is something that uh, Vladimir Putin cannot ignore. Uh, but the question, I think the question is still a fair question, that if the Russians really ramp it up, how far will they ramp it up, and, and will the Ukrainians have the capacity to respond to that? But for now, uh, I think the morale and, the, and the, um, the direction of the fight favors Ukraine. And I think, it, as uh, Ambassador Dalder pointed out, I think it's very important for the... Uh, the support that uh, the Western countries are giving to Ukraine to kind of think that, hey, this is really worth it. And Ambassador Dalder, as a final question to you, is there a, a diplomatic uh, opportunity here or um, to, to seize this moment? Or how does this shape what will be a diplomatic end to this, however that may come? Uh, I, I really don't think so. Uh, uh, clearly, the Ukrainians think that there is much more to be gained by continuing to fight him because they're on the winning side. And the Russians uh, have nothing to gain uh, through diplomacy because what they want, which is control of Ukraine, is something that they can only achieve militarily. And it's very unlikely to see Putin at this point suing for peace, having put his entire country, his entire regime uh, uh, and its legitimacy at stake in having a war that succeeds rather than fails. So uh, the battle lines will likely to be the ones that will continue to, to tell the story rather than what happened uh, at the diplomatic table, which I don't see folks uh, returning to anytime soon. All right, Ambassador Ivo Dalder and General James Jones, thank you both very much.